I'm sitting here with our um, February Manager of the Month, Simon Weaver. How are you feeling, Simon, after Saturday's two-all draw against Colin? Yeah, we, we're. Uh, I think we all wanted to take the three points before the game, uh, but to take away a point after um, having been two-one down, and it was really close to the end. Um, I think we were more relieved than anything uh, to come away with something. Um, you know, and that might be a valuable point at the end of the day. Uh, come the end of the season, um, we'll, we'll have a look at our tally then and see where we are. But uh, it was it was a quite dramatic game, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, and things conspired against us in the first ten minutes with Ashley getting injured, mm -hmm. um, us just hitting the post uh, via Adam's header, um, and so you know, having to make a substitution at that early stage was uh, rocked the plans a little bit. Um, and then they scored, so it, it wasn't a great start, and everything you prepare can you just get torn up in ten minutes. But that's football, and we got on with it. And I thought the lads were immense the last fifteen minutes. It, it wasn't a pretty game, wasn't wasn't we weren't as fluent as we have been for since the start of the year, uh, certainly at home. Um, but we gained, you know, what could be a, a valuable point. I mean, going off on a tangent, I mean, how is Ashley doing? Because that was a nasty gash. I was, and he was in hospital for quite a while, I understand. Yeah, he had five stitches to his head, um, so he'll be wearing a bandage this, this weekend. But he texted me on Saturday night saying he'll be fine, he'll be all right to train on Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, in, in preparation for next Saturday's big game. Do they not have a rule, though, if it's um, a head injury, they have to, is it 24 hours or something now? Or is that the. Um, um, I think he'll probably look to have his stitches out at the end of the week, right. but it, it, there's no way he could have continued with oh. the game, you know, with the amount of blood and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he was just right to stitch him up and make sure he's 100% right. It's kind of typical though of his attitude because there's, um, we could all see that he was desperate to continue. I think it was when he was arguing with uh, Matt Hornale, the physio, the sort of saying, I don't want to come off. And I, uh, that's going to be indicative obviously of the spirit that you've installed in the team at the moment. Well, it's the spirit of the lads really and uh, that they've generated and they just want to, they want to play the football and want to play the football here and, and do what they can to get us in that promotion playoff. Uh, zone and maintain our position within there. Um, I, I just think he was he was unlucky on the day and uh, desperate to to play. But mm -hmm. these days you can't have a Terry Butcher situation where you, your shirt's covered in blood, <laughs> any speck of blood, and uh, the, the, we've only got so many shirts. And I think his his head was in a bad way. It was a bit of a contentious game in some respects because I mean obviously we came into it knowing that uh, Colwyn have got the better of us on several occasions this season. It seems at the moment they're our bogey side. But then we had the very last incident as well with the, the referee appearing to point at the spot for a penalty for a foul on Joe Ironside, but then somehow changing his mind. I mean, what were you guys on the bench feeling at the time? Well, we thought we were delighted with the equaliser a couple of minutes before, but then you could see with the body language of the players, and I've had a look back on the video, there's Woody picking it up from the goal and sprinting back. Everyone's yeah. going back. It was a mass celebration. Uh, it was a great atmosphere in the ground, but we wanted to go and get the winner so we kept putting balls in the box and asking questions and then um, it did seem a penalty from where I was um, and the referee did seem to point to the spot but then seemed to veer away at the last second uh, with his arm and point for a, a goal kick which was a little bit confusing at the time um, and of course it's worse when your emotions are, uh, are right up and you, you, you're willing the team on and wanting a, a winning goal in the end but it wasn't to be it wasn't to be and there's nothing we can do about it now and we'll just try and get three points on Saturday. Now I know that your philosophy as a manager is that you don't bother the referees and the linesmen as they're walking off, you know, like you've admitted before. It's a, an emotional situation and you like to take time obviously to reflect. But did you speak to the referee about that after, my, after the game? I, I saw him on, on the way out uh, of the ground and just asked him a question. Did you point to the spot and then change your mind? And he said no, but, um, you know, he's going to say that, isn't he? <laughs> um, I, I, you know, he's, I've got to ask the question, um, but I thought, you know, a one-to-one -one situation, it uh, doesn't look as embarrassing as when you, you're scuttling across the pitch and, and flailing your arms up in the air. Um, and so, you know, I think there's, there's times when and when not to do it. Yeah. Last time that we spoke, um, it was just after the 4-2 victory against Gloucester, and then we went through um, a three-match spell of not winning. But we're only ever losing by one goal. It was um, Worcester 1 0, Geisley 3 2, and then Vauxhall 1 0. In some respects, it's going to be a very encouraging sign that if we do lose a game, it's by such narrow margins. But on the 
other side, I suppose it can be equally as infuriating that it is just a narrow margin that we're losing by. Yeah, I think that's right. I think it's more the case of that was 2013 part of the season. I think since the turn of the year we've lost once, uh, which is a cracking record to have. Mm. Um, yet the 1 0 margin goals can add to the frustration, but then again, it's better than losing three or four. And you know, that's when your game plan's not right, players haven't played right, and the, and the confidence takes a, a bit of a beating. Yeah. The games that we have lost 1 0 are largely lower to mid table. We know that. I think we've addressed it and we've become more of a threat in, in each and every game I think we've played since. It's been a bit of a weird season in the respect of we've had some very bizarre matches. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the two that spring to my mind are the Geisley one. I think there was about five, four penalties given. And then obviously the Boston United one, which as we, we spoke at the time, I mean, in 20 years of football, never seen anything like that. Yeah. From your perspective, you know, what, what has it been like for you? Because the games, like I say, some of them just seem to have been so unreal. Yeah, I, I, I think you watched the match of the day and <laughs> in the premiership, it's been the case there as well. There have been penalties galore and sending offs and um, dug out drama. Uh, but I think everyone wants it so much, you know, and it just gets more exacerbated as the, as the days go by and as the seasons go by it seems really uh, emotions run high and as you get to the business end of the season and nine teams can be still in there um, and possibly go up then uh, emotions run even higher so you know, there's a lot at stake um, I think yeah the guys the game was bizarre with the amount of penalties but I think we had to learn our lesson as well I don't think it was one way I think we have to stand up in the penalty area and not commit I think we have to be more compact as a defensive unit and I think we've done that since. Um, I think Heath has helped that with his um, vocal command of players around him and I think other players have really come into form so you're less likely to give a penalty away in those circumstances. Um, and you're hoping for a balanced view from the referee as well. I'm going to put you a bit on the spot now Sam because I know that um, managers and referees sometimes you know, they don't mix but we've seen not just obviously at our level, I mean, of the big contentious issue this weekend, I mean, Andre Marino with the, the sending off of the wrong player. You know, how do you view the referee's role in the kind of game? Because obviously we don't have the technological benefits that the Premier League does. We don't have mm. the microphones, we don't have the referees, just, you know, wide to the assistants and the, the fourth assistant being able to say their part from the, um, you know, where they are. But, you know, w w what do you make of the referees at this level? I think by and large they're good. Um, I think uh, the ones that are probably the better are the ones that manage the game, manage people and, and are able to talk to you uh, and explain decisions, whether that's you're going to knock, knock on the door at half time and you say just, you know, what was that about? You know, was that a penalty? Why did you not give that? And to give you a balanced view and, and not just be dismissive of you, I think you gain more respect and uh, you, get, you respect them more. Um, and I think it, it does work both ways. I think it's... Um, Something of a, a poison chalice being being the referee of a match. I think it, it, you know it's a thankless task, and and the same with referees. And it, it's not an easy job, and I think it's a lot. It, it's one way a lot of the time. There's a lot of what could be deemed hatred coming from the terraces and coming from, and that's in the whole of football, and from the dugouts, and they take a lot of abuse. Mm -hmm. And I think then they can really close off, and I think we can help each other. You know, and it, I think you look at the example of rugby you don't mess with the referee and you know the, the blow up and the, the, the opposition uh, gain 10 yards I think if they brought that firmly into football there'd be a bit more probably of a cooler head from a referee's point of view and then they don't get panicky with decisions and then uh, make panic decisions so I think um, I think both you know I think particularly in football uh, we can al learn a lot from other games and, and therefore the standard would improve I mean, as an ex-professional as well, I mean, you play loads of games, so you can see it from the manager's point of view, yet you can see it from the player's point of view. Do you think it is about time they brought in technology for the referees at all levels? I mean, obviously, we can't have the great big plasma screens mm. that they do at the Emirates and stuff like that, but there's still the, the simple things, again, like the microphones, they're talking to one another, so there's constant yeah. you know, communication I between the I think there's got to be more, more communication, certainly at this level. I think it's good enough level now. Um, OK, you're not going to have a big... Uh, big plasma screen up there are you? <laughs> you know, to be able to refer to but I think there should be more communication even if it's hang on time out and have a word in the linesman um, what's your opinion of it uh, and I think there should be more and it was brought up in the recent conference uh, meeting down in Telford 
there should be more uh, discussions between clubs that, that, that's referees and officials coming into clubs watching them train even taking training session and so that when people are appealing to me in training I'm thinking you know that's the rule I'm sure you know that way I let a lot go and you know, it gets a bit feisty at times but um, then players can have a point of view and sit down with them after uh, and I think it's a common theme among managers is do you know the game do you understand the game um, when there's been a lad that's fallen over or bought a trip in the area and gained a penalty um, yeah he's conned the referee he's conned him because he wants to get his team a penalty but does the referee know he's a conning him is it a genuine trip or he's just left his trailing leg there to gain advantage and I think that's the understanding of the game that can be gained by more communication you know, and club time with referees that's excellent. I mean, hopefully we'll see something like that coming in because like I said it's a, it's a big part of the game now and it's it needs to be part. addressed it's a massive part and you pl- plan and prepare all week and uh, even in pre-season for the games coming up in the season and, and within 10 minutes the game, the game can be taken away from you um, and so you don't want the game to uh, develop into a who who's best at conning the official rather than who's <laughs> best at football since, uh, as you rightly pointed out, since the beginning of the year, we've gone on an absolute tremendous run. It's one one defeat, and to that dratted Welsh side again, Colwyn Bay, who seem to get the best of us at the moment. But you've got to look back on the beginning of the year with such pride. I mean, the team has absolutely stepped up to the plate and has responded magnificently. Absolutely, yes. I, I think we, we took a bit of stick early in the season because we made a few changes to the squad. And uh, I take great pride in the fact that you know we've all stuck together and there, hasn't been, there haven't been many changes throughout the season and I think that um, we, we talked to players in the summer you know we wanted them to be part of our squad and uh, we signed up some good individuals good pros good honest lads and they have come to the fore and sometimes because good lads are nice lads uh, it takes them a little bit longer uh, in terms of settling down and uh, I think everyone's settled together and and really come on strong and since the turn of the year we've put in some fantastic displays scored a lot of goals and answered some critics I mean you look at the list of the teams that we've beaten um, Solihull Moors Altrincham uh, Hendersford Town and there's almost an expectancy now that we can go on we can push on and we can make the playoffs I mean I know that's something that you obviously want to do but you know, in your heart how are you feeling at the moment is this something that you're thinking yes we can actually now we can do this we can do it uh, I think we probably need to win five out of seven um, I think it's it's a hard task that 15 points um, that, that we need to achieve uh, but then the Boston manager we're saying that Brackley Hansford mm. uh, Solihull they've got it all to do as well so um, whilst that might be right okay that you know you'd expect your guys these altriums with the games in hand to be up there and for the, the hit recent history they've had of of being an experience of being in there uh, and the experience within the squads but um, there's another place in there you know uh, up for grabs and I think it's about who gets nervous the most on, on each Saturday and who's up for it and who can think with clarity and, and go for the win in some respects it must be a bit of a different um, predicament for you at the moment because in the last few seasons we've always been the team that have been sort of on the, the outside of the playoffs but looking to jump in with um, you know five six matches to go Whereas now we're actually in the playoffs and we're having to now keep an eye on not only what's going on ahead of us, but also what's going on behind us. I mean, that must, must be difficult for you as well. Well, oh, yeah, but you know that I put a phone ban on everyone involved in the first team squad um, throughout the match day, just switching it off as I'm going and naming the team to um, after I've finished the end uh, final team talk after the game uh, because I don't want to get really involved with what other people are doing. Mm. Um, you look at half time someone's 2-1 down or 4-1 down like um, the Barrow game against Boston the other day and you can, you can think alright oh, ok that's fine then you know we just we just need a draw uh, but I think if you just think right you've got to be defensively organised but the aim we have to win games we have to win games don't panic just because someone's um, losing uh, uh, winning and don't panic if someone's losing but if you don't know it takes away that problem yeah. it just allows you to think about the game ahead you must hate Alan reading out the half-time scores and at the uh, the break. Well, you can't really miss his voice, can you? <laughs> so we turn up the music in the changing room at that bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's turning out that we've got quite what looks on paper anyway very hard running, you know, with the last five games. Because I don't know if um, you're the kind of manager that's 
sort of looks at the the whole of the you know the remaining bit of the fixture list. So you just think I'm just going to take it one game at a time. But as it stands at the moment, obviously we've got Leamington, Geisley, North Ferriby, Barr, and then Stockport. That's actually quite a difficult running. But is it a running that you sort of like you relish the challenge, or would you rather had a you know the lower league table, the lower league teams? Well, they, we've already discussed that. I think the, the our record against the top teams have been really good. Uh, the middle teams, we, we've still probably got something to prove in most people's eyes. So you can't really read into it. I think at this level, you get some strange results, and as soon as you start thinking, well, that's a banker, or that's a, you know that's that's going to be really difficult, um, then you lose focus, and you know we have to we have to go out and win on Saturday, uh, and then we have to go and try and get the win at Gloucester. Uh, if we do that in the next two games, then, uh, and then you, you're chalking games off then and, and actually believing that actually only three games away from possibly getting the playoffs. So, but first things first, and it's going to be a tricky game against Gainsborough. They've got nothing to lose, uh, you know, coming to our place. And, um, you know, they'll set up defensively. They've got a great manager in Steve Ausham, so they know a lot about us. We've got to get past them. In between, obviously, the Gloucester and the Limited match, we've got the uh, West Riding County Cup final mm-hmm. over at um, well, what used to be called Valley Parade. I think it's a Coral Window Stadium now. How much of that, how, you know, is that game going to be like a pressure reliever in some respects? I mean, we, we, we're, we're in the business end of the season now. There's all to play for. And then we've got the Cup. Do you see that as a case of that could actually be sort of the, the valve? We can, we can turn the valve off, let the players enjoy this, relax, and then hopefully go back to the league campaign? Probably, yeah. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, a bonus one really, a bonus game where we can really enjoy playing on a good pitch, uh, fantastic surroundings and, and and pick up some silverware and that'd be that'd be great for the supporters, great for the players and it's um, it's better than training, isn't it? You know, it, it's something to look forward to and we've done well in that cup run. Um, and we say so we aspire to win every game. And so if we win that next game in that cup then we've won a cup and that's another step in the right direction. I mean personally how forward are you looking uh, looking you know, how how much are you looking forward to the game, should I say? Oh, big time, big time. But I, I keep saying, you know, I, I'd rather take two wins in the league, the next two wins, uh, I would, because it really ju- just keeps the momentum going. Um, but we've got to be winners, you know, to succeed I- in this game. And uh, we have, we want to take three wins, therefore we want to win the Cup. Have you had a chance to view Eccles Hill at the moment? Do you know much about them? I know a little bit about them, uh, and I know they play some good football. And I know they've got a lot of experience within their coaching staff. So they like to uh, play the game the right way. They like to get it down, play through the thirds. And, you know, it's going to be a tricky game on a big open park. So we don't take anything for granted. Uh, certainly, we, we've just got to set our stall out. And uh, there's no need for us to change the way we play um, because we've been successful since the turn of the year. Um, and we've got to be better at our game plan than they are at theirs. Going back to the league, out of all the matches that we have left, which ones would you say are possibly the most crucial ones that uh, we'll be playing? Um, I, I, I think momentum in sport is massive, um, and if it turns either way, you know it can be critical. I think a critical is a critical game is this weekend mm. um, because it's a, a banana skin, um, and uh, you've got to you've got to put. Uh, these teams to bed, you have to, you know, and that's no disrespect to them, but you, we need the three points, and, uh, and they'll be looking to gain at least a point. Uh, and they've got some good players, let's not forget that. Uh, but I think this is crucial because five seems a lot to get out of seven, but then if you can get the first win, then four doesn't sound half as much, although it is, you know, it doesn't seem mentally as, uh, as tough. So you get through this one. And then concentrate again. And plus, if you make it a good win and with a good performance, the confidence is fully restored. And uh, and that's what it's all about. I think uh, you know if, if you can, let's say, win 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 that game, and then concentrate on the next one, uh, then the momentum's building. And at the end of the Saturday night, when you're going home, you can check results. And I'm allowing myself to. Then you can look down and think, actually, they they, they may have they've slipped up there. And then mentally, again, you're in a happier place because you've got a bit of a cushion and so it's whilst I know you might want me to pick out you know one or two and say <laughs> oh, well that Ferriby game away or the guys the game's going to be a, a juicy one yeah you're right um, but we need to be in contention by that point now obviously the run of results has seen um, you pick up the scoring off manager month for February 
what are your thoughts and feelings about that? Well, it's great. You know, it was it was, it was nice to get the call. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was uh, actually it was it, uh, an email from Mike Bly. So it's nice to get a nice email from Mike and uh, <laughs> uh, full stop. But uh, no, it, it, it was good. It, it's good. Uh, it's good feeling. It's good feeling to be able to take that home and show Sally. And but uh, I, I think the the overriding feeling is that's good. But um, it's nothing unless you're celebrating with your you know your team and and Macca and I want us all to pick up bigger awards than that come the end of the season and that's where we're judged not on, not on one month of decent results Now are you a, sus- a suspicious manager because um, or a superstitious manager even because the, 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 the <laughs> <laughs> got that one wrong didn't I um, there's that famous curse manager of the month award curse and afterwards we drew and then lost and then obviously started to win again you know do you put that down to the, the, the fable curse of the manager of the month or is it just a case of it, you know it happened I've been a little bit superstitious in some ways, but uh, no, I didn't put it down to that. I just thought um, Colin Bay came out after half time. We had about 10 minutes. They're not a 30 yarder in and a set piece in, and <laughs> it changed the game. And we, we were unlucky not to get back into it through a disallowed goal in the dying seconds. Um, but no, I don't think it's down to me picking up a bit of glassware. <laughs> <laughs> Going to go on to the, uh, the, the players at the moment. Um, and especially our front two, Ashley and Chris. I mean, they're yeah. they're absolutely on fire at the moment. But they went through a bit of a barren spell at the beginning part of the season. Um, but they've they've come really good now. I mean, that's going to be very pleasing for you to see. You know, you stuck by them. You said publicly, you know, so we're going to support you if you do go for a dry spell. Yeah. And now they seem to come out the other end. Well, we've got to have a consistent message to the lads. You know, when we signed them, and I said to both of them that they're going to be an integral part of the setup. Um, there's huge potential with both of them uh, physically they look right and, and I just we, we just got up to that point against Altrium where you go woof look at these two you know they're as good as any two in the league and uh, they're really setting it alight and um, they know the capabilities of how they can, how good they can be and uh, they've done that since the turn of the year yet yeah, took a bit of bedding in um, and a tweak of the tactics as well you know we started off with a 4-2-3-1 system uh, to accommodate Woods in as well and uh, in the hole and, and that pushed for the balance of the team it pushed Ashley slightly to the right with the freedom to roll in off the line um, but at times it, you know it became a little bit too intricate away from home and uh, it sidelined Ashley's um, strengths uh, we've gone two down the middle uh, recently uh, with Wood, in Woods' absence through injury and uh, the, the two working closer together have certainly certainly forged a relationship and um, that's um, been fruitful for the club Now we've already mentioned this next player but uh, Matt Heath mm. he's come in and I know he came in at the time obviously when Lee was injured but he's brought in such stability at the back I mean he, he's literally a born leader you see him on the pitch, he's pointing, he's shouting he's instructing you know obviously Shane and the other guys what to do I mean he's just like a different cast of players in some respects well, he's been brilliant uh, because he's got that wealth of experience, and yet he's only 32. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, when you when you meet a player, you know, I always have my concerns, probably because of past experiences with a few individuals, where I think, oh yeah, they, they talk talk a great game. They obviously they've got all that experience to look back on. And um, but with Heathy, when I met him, I thought he's still got the desire. I know he has. I know he has. Not just because I want him to have that desire. You know, he, he's still looking at it and uh, looking at our season and knows who we're playing when and, and wants to be a part of it um, and you know he's going to do some coaching in the community but f- first and foremost for me being selfish about it I wanted him to really drag the lads through it defensively get as narrow and went out of possession and, and command those around him and he's been brilliant he's brilliant and I had one concern that uh, you know when I met him for a coffee that I thought how is this guy so nice he's going to be uh, <laughs> commanding at the back and a big ugly warrior but uh, he's got both uh, which is a massive bonus for the club uh, he's brought that stability he lives really close to the club as well so he's got it at its heart you know his wife comes to watch he even brings his little dog but uh, I'm not sure if he can get a good view um, <laughs> but he's he's a character in there and he's a go-to person he's, he's one of those I think we lined up against uh, Solihull recently in the land of the Giants and a few a few of the smaller lads said that few big units in their team and he stood up and said oh, who's bigger than me 
you know, and I thought, yeah, good man, good man, you're right, you're huge. Um, so in both areas, he's been more than massive um, for us and a uh, good character. Anton Brown, at the moment, seems to be absolutely controlling midfield. I mean, he's a very, very quiet guy. Um, and I don't know if a lot of the, the viewers will know, but Anton's a very private guy, very, you know, um, not not a close character in that respect, but you know he likes his privacy, you know, and he respects, you know, people that you know respect his privacy. But on the pitch, apart from being an absolute man mountain, I mean, he's, this guy's mm. huge. You've seen me out his shirt on if you do the Bradford <laughs> Park Avenue game, and the walk whistles he was getting from the female fans was absolutely amazing. But on the pitch, he's amazing. Yeah, he's he's been really really great for us the last couple of months. Um, I think he was unlucky with his injury in the summer. And that kind of hit, it cut into his pre-season training a bit. Um, he did bulk up in the summer, um, which probably didn't need to do. Look at the size of him at Bradford, um, but uh, he's, he's really at it now, yeah, both fitness-wise and he's settled in. You know, he's been at one club for seven years, so it, it can take a little bit of time and needs a bit of patience from from us, uh, from supporters as well, to understand that. Um, got a bit of a journey to make for training and he's never been late he's always bang on and uh, he's a totally genuine guy and mm. I think he's he's got where's the badge with pride now and he's part of us and him and Adam have been superb in the middle of the park and it's quite a daunting test to play against those two I'd imagine because um, they both can they both can play and they both put it put put the effort in as well physically strong uh, but he's certainly come to the fore the one thing that struck me about Anton especially in the last the match against Colwyn was when he scored the look of sheer emotion on his face. Mm. There was, um, there was pride, but there was a, there was a rage. We want to get on this. We mm. want to get. You know, I've scored. That's great. But let's get on and let's get this win. Again, that's going to be something that's tremendously brilliant for you to see because again, you know, it shows that everyone's buying into the ethos mm. of the club. Well, actually, yeah. I know it's a bit deep this, but I always watch the games. You know, two or three times. But I look at the celebrations, and everyone's different. Steve Mallory is one of these that I want to get back to the centre circle quickly and kick off again. Let's go. Uh, Woodsy, when he scores, is um, is a, if he scores, is a jogger. Is the last play, the person <laughs> in the ground ready to kick off again. Um, <laughs> and Anton, uh, he he always pick, either picks up one of his teammates or you know he's ready to like the Incredible Hulk, ready to rip his top off. You know he's 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 immersed in the moment, and he might be a quiet guy off the pitch, but sometimes they make the biggest characters on it and um, he, he, you can sh see his passion for the team and for himself uh, uh, when he scores or we score Dan Clayton you took a lot of people by surprise uh, you know, by bringing Dan back but since he's come back we've seen a different kind of you know player to him he, he, that cross I think it was against um, Hednesford mm. where he looked like he'd run the ball out and all of a sudden wallop this cross comes in so deep and we scoff from it yeah he, he was awesome in that game and that I think in all the four games he's played since he's come back, uh, he's he's reached a level at, at least eight out of ten, and um, and that's what I envisaged. I think he's he's been part of our club for some time now, but obviously he's he's nipped in and nipped out to gain experience, and uh, I think his father's in the game, so he knows what how to benefit his his lad, and I think Dan's his own man as well. That he um, I love his hunger to play football and not just sit on the bench. You know, he, he's got that desire to learn at a young age and the only way of learning really is by racking up the games and he did that at Gainsborough I went to watch him a couple of times um, did well against us I went to watch him away at Leamington for Ferriby and you always have to go and watch players away from home because they're away from their home supporters and some some players you know, can throw one in away from home not, not one of ours of course but um, it's always wise to have a look at them you know, home and away and he ran the show and I thought wow you know he's he's really come of age he's come on he's done what we wanted he's done what he wanted and it, uh, for me I've always said since day one if we can get um, a handful of local lads in the, within the squad it, it lifts the local pride from the, in the, from the supporters onto the pitch and um, you know with Dan uh, once once he was ready uh, I was desperate to get him back what did you say to him to actually get him back? Because obviously he was at North Ferriby, who are sort of scrapping out at the moment with AFC mm. Telford at the top of the league. But you also must have said something to him and sold the club really well in order to get him to come back 
to Harrogate. I mean, not that we're out of the you know the mix by any uh, shape or form, but mm. you know, some people sort of say, well, how come he's gone from a top of the t- league table to one that's sort of like battling to get in the playoffs? Well, I always knew he enjoyed his time here. Uh, he enjoyed training. He enjoyed the, the locality. He enjoyed his his pals uh, being in the team, and um, I, I think hopefully the way he was managed as well, Macra and I, and you know everyone behind the scenes, and so. We ticked a few boxes for each other, I like to think, and um, and also he wasn't starting games at Ferriby, and that was the be all and end all re- really with Dan. And I was looking to bring him back into the team straight away, and um, I'm glad he's proven me right because he's he's got such ammunition for us coming from that left foot of his and an engine to die for, and he's unlucky with his injury at the minute, but we've got to get him 100% fit this time and not rush him back because when he'll be back, you know, we're uh, we're looking to get a lot more from his crossing ability again. We seem to have gone through um, another period of gaining injuries. All of a sudden, we we had it at the beginning of the season, mm. and you know we've had it over seasons as well, where the injury list has been absolutely yeah, phenomenal. Right. We, we've spoken about this several times, um, but we seem to go through these constant periods of loads of injuries, nothing. Loads of injuries, nothing. I mean, apart from it doing the physios, Matt's heading yeah. constantly. It, it must be a bit of a worry for you when they sort of, you see an injury happening and they, another one occurs, and you think, "Oh, blimey, we're we going through the same pattern again." I know. It, it, you know, we we analyse everything at the end of each season. We we did it last year. We had a bit of a study from uh, John Gray's York St John University came and had a look at uh, all the different. It's called purposeful movements in a game. Um, we strengthened the hamstrings uh, in pre-season. Uh, and did training, could tell training according to the results to reduce injuries and uh, I think that's worked uh, but obviously we've just been a little bit unlucky, you can't do much about uh, a head wound the other day you can't do much about um, Dan's injury other than make sure the scar tissue from the, the, the strain is, is properly right and not have an impetuous manager who wants to get him back on the field straight away um, there's there's one or two injuries, like Shane Killick is a dead leg. You know, there's no analysing needed there. It's um, <laughs> it's just a uh, you know a knobbly knee that's gone straight into it. Um, you know, it, a bit of a bit of luck you need sometimes, and we've had a lot of luck through this season with the injuries. Uh, and plus, we've had a great physio and, and, uh, and John Gray Fitness who, expert who's, who's helped us in those areas to to make sure that's managed right. Uh, but with the odd knot, you can't do anything about it. The more games you have, the prob- probability of injuries goes up obviously now we've got a, a really big well not really big squad but we've got a lot of team members that can obviously fit into different mm. positions the often used saying of the manager has a right selection headache must be well is one that obviously can be applied to you uh, on several occasions this season but is it something that you actually enjoy do you enjoy having this headache or is it something that you really wish actually I could do without this um, no, I think it, it's great it's great um, <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, the headache. You think, right? I'd like to move on from my thought now to enjoying <laughs> watching uh, watching something on a Friday night in front of the to, you know, with my wife. But uh, you know, it gets into your brain because you, you're enthusiastic about it. And I'm enthusiastic about every player of mine because I think they've all bring something. I think young Jamal's been unlucky. Um, he's, he's been brought brought in from Sheffield United, done well. He's raw. He's 18. Wants to be playing, but uh, he's, he understands. He understands the situation. Um, Joe's had to be patient. Um, everyone deserves a chance sooner or later. Everyone needs that chance to be able to show what their talents are about. Um, and so it's not easy, you know. But for me, if someone wears the shirt, wears it with pride, and and brings something to the fore, you know, and where you think, yep, it's like Ashley and and Hawley. How could I change them? You know, at the minute, and and uh, and play Joe instead of them. Bec- you can't just because someone's on loan, even though Joe's got a lot going for him. Um, Liam's done well early in the season, but Hawley and and uh, and Ash both grabbed the shirts and started scoring goals at that time. So it's unlucky for Joe, unlucky for Jamal, unlucky for Liam. Um, but the headache's there. But you've got to be keep faith with the lads who are doing well. How do you pick the team? We've heard um, there's been uh, supposedly unrest by uh, Mr. Ferdinand. We have Ferdinand saying that you know David Moyes' uh, way of coming in, sort of naming the team with about ten minutes to go, 
you know, causes unrest. Are you that kind of manager? Do you sort of like, you, you've obviously indicated that you, you uh, spend a lot of time on a Friday night thinking about this. Do you sort of pick your, your team and then think, right, that's it, not going to change? Or you want to kind of manage it or sit down and watch Casualty and halfway through the most glorious part of the thing, think, actually, I could play Lee Franks there and then I could move back over there and I could do this. And, and you know, all changes, are you kind of... Um, yeah. I, I think there's less to think about when you're on a run like we're on. Yeah. Um, because you think everything's settled. You say, okay, I can relax. And uh, the lads know their roles. There's no need to change the, the game plan. Um, we know what we're about. And so there might be one, in, you know, one replacement, Lee Franks coming in for Shane Killett because he was out injured. Franks, he took his job on and did really well. He he became injured. Steve Mallory's come in, uh, and uh, they've all done well. So that helps my job. Um, uh, w- if you go on a losing spell like we did earlier the season, then you think more about it because you want that answer as to the fans. So you you think it might be one move, might do it. But what I've learned over time is, if you change too many variables at the same time, you never know which one uh, actually worked the trick. You know, actually solved the problem. Um, so it's just trying to step with the ship and um, normally the, the team know that, really know from the set pieces we do uh, on a Thursday night what the team is uh, but on the occasion when people are left out um, whilst I might have been a bit angry at games when I said right, I'm not doing that again and pull people out and explain the reasons uh, I've gone back on my word and um, I do I, I explain the reasons before I pick the team uh, I explain that everyone's needed and everyone deserves and reserves the right to have an explanation. So what you're saying is, you know, you don't wake Sally up in the middle of uh, Saturday morning at two o'clock in the morning saying, "I'm going to play Woodsy there instead." No, I know it's normally Friday night tea time when I get the salt and pepper pots and <laughs> move them around. And <laughs> what do you think to that there? But uh, no, no, it's um, it, it should be, you know, I'm quite subtle in my mind, especially now. Um, and uh, the lads grow into the roles, don't they? When they and the, the number of games they pick up on the trot and it, it's good for them. Now going on to the support, um, something that you've mentioned a few times in your programme notes, but um, they've been absolutely amazing, especially mm. like, again from the turn of the um, uh, the, the year. It's um, the drummers, the, the, their, the vocal support there, and on a lot of occasions they, you know, we've been saying you know, you've actually outsung the, the home support yeah, when yeah. we've been away. I mean that has got to be so pleasing for you. Oh, it's been incredible, incredible. Hasn't it? And how far it's progressed, and this, the fans have, have become in a, um, kind of a, a cult following now, you know, uh, uh, for this league. I think, you know, we go away to Brackley, go away to Altrincham, and, and people, officials at Altrincham, are saying, Wow, you know, they're so loud, they're, they're incredible. Loudest 40 odd fans that we've ever heard, and um, it's such a, a, it's a privilege to manage this group of lads, but also that to have those fans behind us right now, and you know, at Brackley. Adam knocked a 30 yarder in, and I'm sure the fans helped inspire him to do that. Mm. Um, because you think, go on, you know, I will have a go, you know, and the fans are cheering uh, people's names on, and, and uh, are really, the drums beating. And um, it's quite funny at Brackley that one steward wanted him to be removed because he was making a bit too much noise, but <laughs> that was a shame. Um, but uh, no, they're, they're great, you know, and we turn up at home now when the following is there, and it's a good, good, good home support the other day and it can really drive you on as a manager and as a player and it's so important uh, and that really makes the players feel that there is real real momentum behind this thing at the minute and uh, the vocal support will will live long in the memory you know, in terms of the altering games and Brackley games and, and hopefully more games to come come this exciting end of the season. And it's not also on the pitch as well though, where they've noticed the benefit, I mean yeah. they, they all club together didn't they to uh, lay on a coach for the supporters as well. I mean, again, obviously, sort of detaching yourself from that and looking at it from the manager's point of view, you've got to be proud of the players who are doing that because no. they didn't have to. Oh, they were great. You know, that's the first time in my career I've ever known a group of players you know, come to the front of the bus and say, look, we want to pay for these supporters. And um, I think they're often taken for granted, um, maybe higher up the, the football pyramid where they get the, they get the, the f- uh, money from the sky. And uh, But I think if it wasn't for fans... And you don't get inspirational moments. You don't get that adrenaline buzz that can um, encourage fantastic moments in games, and and uh, that's what we all probably fell in love with the game for. You know, when we were young, going to our first big game and seeing fans in the numbers turn up and chant, chant and dance when uh, when uh, goals are scored. So it it was great, and it's a great moment for me when a couple of lads came to the front of the coach and said, "Look, this is what we want to do," and it makes them 
for me they're, they're emotionally aware of what what goes off in a game and how much it means to them having the black and white scars behind the goal it obviously is a lot with some of the football that we've been playing this season I mean mm. it's hard not to be biased because obviously you're the manager and I'm the press officer but it has been absolutely brilliant to watch has there been times that you and John have sort of forgotten that you are manager and assistant manager and sort of found yourself getting caught up in the emotion of the game and thinking oh yeah that's a brilliant pass or a wonderful shot um, yeah yeah. sometimes I've had a bit of a fist bump you know when uh, it's what could be perceived random moments um, you know and, and that can be a, a Matt Heath block you know and I'm celebrating that or I'm, um, a Steve Mallory whip ball in or kind of dropping his shoulder and, you know we've got a number of individuals that can stamp their authority in the game it, it, as long as they stick to their own strengths and um, it, it, you know we've had some great times on the bench this season where Macca and I and uh, Mac is down there and he's, he's saying, trying to say something in me here and he's saying um, <laughs> we're not bad you know we're not bad and it, it fills me with joy Macca knows the game inside out and you know he knows a decent team when he sees one and we've had fantastic games um, but we're judged on the end of the season so we've got to we've got to keep having fantastic moments now yeah we, it's another year of progress um, but it would be magical it would be a magical way to end by having more performances, more magic moments, um, and then seeing it through. Just going um, back to certain, you know, some of the players, you brought Nathan Cartman on, uh, and then obviously he's, he's gone back down to the railway to play his games mm. there. How are you finding that um, relationship now with railway? Because it does seem to be blossoming quite well. I mean, we've had Connor down there, there's Alex Metcalf, Peter Crook, all of them doing really, really well now for railway. and. It's got to be testament to both you and Billy Miller in the fact that you guys have recognised this relationship and thought, you know, listen, we're going to actually make this a positive. Because as you know, historically, Harrogate Railway, Harrogate mm. Town not really got on. You guys have come, that's all changed. And now it seems that, you know, we have this flow of players between the two teams. Yeah, that's right. And it's based on trust. Um, it started off with, it was Craig McGilvery went down mm. there as I was starting to get to know um, Billy at Railway. Uh, he went down there and, and uh, he gave me an honest assessment. I think his first couple of games, they lost 4-0, 3-1. And I've got a text from Billy saying he's been man of the match. And uh, he could have said something else just to keep him there longer. But he was just completely straight down the line and that brought some trust. Uh, Liam Hardy went down there and said he's coming back from injury. He needs to play 35 minutes first up. And a lot of managers could go, well, I'll play how, however long I want him to play. But because he did it straight with me, even though Liam was doing well, again you trust it. And so each player I know is going to be treated well. Each player, they play football in the right way. And, um, and we've managed to help them as well by the likes of Alex and Peter going down there and doing well for them. Uh, and those players that keep coming back to training and I think they're improving all the time. So they're going to be challenging next year for a starting spot. And so if it helps both players, uh, both teams, and both sets of players, and Harrogate Railway players are okay with this, you know, that some players go down there, and, and I think they are. Uh, and we've had uh, like the likes of Carts come and, and help us as well. Then uh, both clubs improve, which, uh, which is great for the town. Going on to the last nine games, I think, of the league now, what are you saying to the team? How are you keeping their focus? Are you one of these managers that bans the, the playoff word, bans the promotion word? Or do you actively encourage the players to talk about it? Because, I mean, obviously each manager has their own different uh, style with this. No, I, I think if you're too much of a school teacher at times, you don't do this, don't do that. Well, I say don't, don't have your phone on. So when it's business time, it's our business time, we focus on us. Uh, I think other times, um, if people are talking about it, then that's natural, isn't it? You know, um, if you deny everything, then, yeah, there's going to be an undercurrent. You know, people whispering, yeah, but we really are in there. Why, why are you denying it? Um, so just be natural really um, and enjoy the exciting where we are in the league you know ex exciting next few weeks and uh, play positive football and, and get at it and try and make it happen it's there it's there for us if we want it uh, it's there for us if we keep steady and, and do what we're good at um, it's a fight but I think we're good at scrapping um, we love a good scrap me and Macca uh, uh, in terms of you know we want to battle and we want to gain these points we want these lads to be with us and, and fighting 
uh, fighting for us. And so they'll be they'll be playoff talk tonight. They'll be talk tonight about other fixtures. Um, but uh, when all said and done, it's about our eleven lads getting stripped and ready for the game, being motivated and being up for it, and, and going for wins. We've recently seen Arsene Wenger celebrate a thousand games, uh, which is an amazing achievement not only for the fact that obviously managers at that level seem to change nearly every single week but also the fact that the stability he must mm. bring to the club is he a kind of manager that you will you look up to and sort of think I want to kind of emulate that I want to be a thousand games I want to do you know roughly what he's done well yeah you, you, you look at that and you think the longevity in the game is is brilliant it's, a, it's very successful I, I think clubs that have stability um, by and large do well because there's there's an understanding between board and, and management, coaches, staff, and also um, the players know, you know, where it's at. You know, in terms of the management structure, it's not chop and change. There's, there's not that panic. Uh, there's not panic decisions and right there in there out. And you need to know everyone to be able to understand people to get the best out of people. Um, for me, I look at Nigel Clough, what he did at Burton, and aspired to do what he did there. You know, he had uh, two promotions um, over best part of a decade just over a decade there at one club as it and he was from player manager to manager uh, to established manager and um, you know I look at Kevin Wilkin he did a great job at Nuneaton and he's uh, moved on um, at 46 still described as a young manager moved on to Wrexham and um, uh, you know I'm sure he'll do very well but he steadily built his team and, and eventually got promotion at Nuneaton uh, took a few beatings early on last season a new level in the Conference National but taking them on again and um, he's done that with by and large the same group of players and, and that's what I aim to do here um, and I've got 10 years on him which is great uh, <laughs> I'll probably look older than him <laughs> do um, do you think that are you planning now for um, life next season because I know that sometimes as a manager you have to look forward and obviously started to put in plans early. I know that last season when we spoke, you sort of saying, you know, I've started to identify people, I've started to identify things that I want to do. Is that something that you've done now or because we're sort of in the playoffs now and there is that, we can do it, you know? Have you sort of shelved those plans at the moment and think, actually, no, I'm going to now wait until a bit later um, to make those decisions? Well, I, I think the run uh, that we've been on since the turn of the year has proven that we're good enough, you know, we're good enough to do really well. And I think, I, well, I know that I don't have to rip it up mm. and start all over again. Uh, I can't envisage there being the amount of changes within the squad that there were last year or the year before. Uh, I have true, real belief in this group of players. I know it we're going to because the track record's there. And we've gone win, 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 draw, or win, 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 loss, but, you know. Um, that's football, but when you look at our record, we've been top of the, around the top of the form charts for a long time, and that proves that we're good enough as a squad. Um, and so, yeah, you can have the occasional fleeting thought about next season, um, but I'm very confident this group of players, if we went up, can do well in the league above, uh, and can do well at this level as well. I think one of the stats shows that... Um from the 9th of November I think it was really we've never been out of the top 10 mm. and obviously that's something that's different for us this season to mm. other seasons where we sort of had to start off low for, for other reasons and, and then climb up whereas this time you know we dropped briefly out when we had that five mm. game spell where we didn't win but we've come straight back up again mm. and we all seem to be the case at the moment where if we do have a draw or a loss we're following it straight away very quickly with another win I mean again that's going to be a positive that you, know, absolutely, that you see yeah. absolutely and I think if we go back to being consistent with people and um, lads can just, okay, take the panic out of it, you know, we'll be alright, we'll get back out there, roll our sleeves up, can we refer, it's better now because we can refer to that acid test when we lost five and nearly a sixth, everything was squeezing up a bit and tightening up, we came through that though, we drew three all at Boston mm. and, and then people came on strong. And it was almost, oh, we can do it, yeah, we're all right. Um, there wasn't right, four out, four in, or anything like that. It was, no, you're okay, we'll back you. And they've come through that. We played well for three out of those five games, really well. And we should have been winners in the, on those games. 
the same group of players then went on a run and won five later on in the season uh, and have lost once this year and so um, I'm glad we backed them at that point and I'm glad that the players had that mental courage to go out there and bravery to get on the ball and prove people wrong Sam as ever it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you I shall let you go and get ready now to prepare for tonight's training session but thank you very much for taking the time out cheers Peter